This is Spider Baby, and yes, that is Lon Chaney Jr. singing the Ronald Stein theme song. I could not think of a better film in which to inaugurate moviocrity than this. A cult classic that seems to fly in the face of convention at every turn, creating multiple layers for the viewer to assess and yet still providing unforgettable entertainment value. This is a film that was made in 1964 and sat on the shelf for four years when producers had financial trouble. It was released in 1968 and despite being inspired by the four previous decades of horror cinema, people still weren't ready for it. Spider Baby tells the story of the Mary family, who suffer from a rare malady. Everyone in the family line has started to regress once they reach puberty. As they get older, they get more and more childish. As their brains get more primitive, so does their nature. So that eventually they resort to a prenatal state. Savage and bestial, prone to murder, madness, and cannibalism. Lon Chaney Jr. plays Bruno the family's chauffeur and chief servant, who swore to the family patriarch that he would protect the last remaining members of the Mary family. The family members who haven't reached the final stage of their illness are the patriarch's three children, two girls and a boy. The girls, Virginia and Elizabeth, are played by Jill Banner and Beverly Washburn. As for the son, Ralph, hey, it's Sid Haig in his screen debut. The film opens by showing the dark side of the children's illness. A messenger, played by Mantan Moreland, is delivering a package to the Mary house and quickly gets on the wrong end of one of Virginia's games. Ah, I got you. I got you. I got you. Oh, Virginia, you the casting of Moreland was a deliberate, if interesting, choice. Moreland was famous in the 1930s and 40s. However, his style of humor sometimes involved bugging his eyes out, acting terrified of his shadow, a style that became synonymous with some pretty ugly racial stereotypes. By the time Spider Baby rolled around, Moreland wasn't getting many parts anymore, as the civil rights struggle had rightfully taken center stage in American society. All the same, Moreland himself never understood the stigma of acting scared, an emotion he figured wasn't relegated to one race. Also, to lump all of his material into one bit of shtick denies the history of a long career in vaudeville and Hollywood. Here, he is able to do his bit one last time. Funny, tragic, and I happen to think the guy had a lot of talent. Not children. We've got to keep some secrets today. The package being delivered announces the arrival of two long-lost relatives. Easy-going cousin Peter arrives with his gold-digging witch of his sister, Aunt Emily. Emily brings the goofy, corrupt lawyer Schlocker and his assistant Anne in tow. It seems that Emily wants to find any excuse to lock the kids up and take advantage of the family inheritance. Bruno tries to warn the new arrivals of the rare Mary illness, leaving out any details about the kids being murderers, in order to protect them from the outside world. Uh, please treat the children tactfully. You see, they're not accustomed to uh, strangers, and they might act wild if, if encouraged. <laughs> Peter, to his credit, is quite sympathetic, and is actually quite accepting of the Mary children. Unfortunately, Emily isn't buying it, and Schlocker flexes his legalese and Hitler mustache. They are rude, condescending, bossy, and threatening, an invading force from the outside. 
It's just the motivation the merry children need to go from shameful secret holders to murderous predators, all in the name of punishing the corrupt and protecting the family. I don't know what you people are up to here, but I'm going to have to call in the authorities. Now, there are laws. Criminal laws, I'm... What's most amazing about Spider Baby is how it goes for various emotional pulls and nails every single one. Most films fall flat when they try to blend horror and comedy. Either it's not scary enough or the comedy seems forced. But Spider Baby doesn't skip on the chills, the charm, or the chuckles. Forgive the abuse of alliteration. The film is scary and funny. And here's the most shocking of all. It's kind of sweet. Throughout the film, Bruno tries his best to care for the merry children. They have, in many respects, become his children. And like many parents uh, who have children with special needs, it dominates his life. He even tries to instill the values a loving parent would want to see in their children. Bruno, Virginia hurt somebody real bad. You ought to hate her. Elizabeth, how many times have I told you it's not nice to hate? What is it, Bruno? Something bad, isn't it? How many times do I have to tell you just because something isn't good doesn't mean it's bad? I knew that. Just because something isn't good doesn't mean it's bad. Not only could that apply to the children themselves, it's a good lesson. There are plenty of public figures and internet trolls that might want to write that down, in fact. And yet, it always seems like he is fighting a losing battle. He knows that time will claim them, just as it has claimed the generations before. Bruno is absolutely tormented by his duties, but his dedication goes beyond caring for the sickness. It includes protecting these children from the world, and in turn, protecting the world from them. There's a scene in which Bruno knows there is no turning back. The children don't understand the seriousness of the situation, but he does. The outside world has invaded, and the merry children have drawn a line in the sand. There is a circuitous cruelty to the world that the children can't comprehend. That once you topple one obstacle, bigger and more threatening obstacles will inevitably impose themselves upon the smaller, weaker target. He knows that the highway being built nearby will only bring the world and all its selfish lack of understanding even closer. The scene is heartbreaking, and I don't mind telling you, it makes me tear up. How many horror films can you name that brought tears to your eyes? They can't take me away from you, Bruno. They can't make me go away. You won't let them, will you, Bruno? I promised your daddy I wouldn't. I knew you wouldn't, Bruno. I'm not afraid. Well, we didn't have much time anyway. Pretty soon, Ralph, you'll be ready to join Uncle Ned and Aunt Clara. To create characters with insight within the horror genre, a genre whose biggest weakness is often in its disposable characters, is again to the credit of Jack Hill. But here is where we have to single out what is one of the best ensemble casts around. By this point in his career, Lon Chaney Jr. had been long since marginalized by Hollywood. Sad truth about all those universal monsters. They create a whole new film aesthetic, but once the box office receipts started slipping, Universal had no bones about shoving those great actors like Lugosi, Karloff, and Chaney aside. Spider Baby was filmed at a point when Chaney was taking parts on TV shows like Rawhide and Route 66, and in films such as the Mexican schlockfest Face of the Screaming Werewolf. He was long since plagued by illness and alcoholism. It was a sad and cruel fate for such a fine actor, one who had given us so many great roles. But with Spider Baby, Chaney gives us the last truly incredible role of his career. His Bruno is a man torn by his guilt for the crimes that have been committed 
and by his sense of duty and unconditional love. Chaney turns this juicy role into one of his most amazing performances. The children are an incredible trio. You have Beverly Washburn as the more goody-goody of the two, but one who is capable of manipulation and murder. I hate. You're not supposed to hate. You should too. They don't like spiders. I know. That little man looks just like a big, fat bug, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Sid Haig shines in his wordless debut as Ralph, the oldest merry child. Kind of more like a dog than a kid these days, but still just as lovable. Yes, even when he's peeping on Emily. And then you have the title character, Jill Banner, Spider Baby herself. Just an amazing screen presence, capable of being funny, seductive, sweet, and very, very sinister. It's her childhood games which usually end up costing people their lives. But Spider Baby makes it clear that the Merry Children are not evil in the sense that they have been shaped into murderers. They didn't have a say in the matter. No, the film saves its true scorn for the people who are well versed in the ways of the world. The greedy sister, and the crooked lawyer. These characters are without any redeeming qualities. The kids aren't evil per se, but sick. Bruno is a caretaker, honoring his promise. Even the white-bred hero and heroine are clumsy and unaware enough to seem out of step with the rest of the world. Their kinship with the children is related through their reluctance to pronounce judgment upon the children. Peter and Anne are your ordinary people. But unlike many of the nobodies that inhabit this slot in genre films, they are just off enough for their attraction to one another not to seem like just another plot contrivance. It's the all-American courtship without all the window dressing. It's a meet-cute that feels real because of its refreshing dorkiness. They meet, flirt, find mutual interests, in this case old horror films. They bond over this interest, unaware that there is a new, more threatening breed of monsters staring at them right from across the dinner table. Are you a horror film fan, Miss Morse? Oh yes, I love it. Dracula, Frankenstein... And the mummy? Oh, the mummy. I love the mummy. The way he walks. Step scrape. Step scrape. Oh, and the wolf man. Ah! There's going to be a full moon tonight. Lots of little touches like this that place Spider Baby several cuts above the standard genre fare. But director Jack Hill also gives the film its overall creepy, eerie vibe, showing some real inventiveness with his shots. The film is spooky as hell, and yet there's this unique kinetic energy coursing throughout the entire film. It keeps things upbeat and lively. After all, this is a film that features references to incest, rape, cannibalism, possible necrophilia, and all of that from what are practically the good guys. Pretty provocative stuff for a film shot in 1964. But the whole thing is so non-explicit and comedic that all of this seedy material is constantly just percolating underneath the surface. Spider Baby is a winner. It's a film that is fun without being dumb something we won't be able to say for many of the films spotlighted on Moviocrity. If you like your horror or you like your comedy, hell, this one has both in equal abundance, never sacrificing the quality of either. You owe it to yourself to check this one out before Hollywood tries to remake it and inevitably screws it up. Tonight, I'm going to the movie. I'm gonna lay back and stare I let the pictures take me anywhere Tonight, it's gonna be adventure